Well, good morning, everybody. It's lovely to worship you, welcome you to our worship service this morning. Lovely to welcome you to our church. Um, if you've not been here before, uh, my name's Peter. I'm one of the church wardens, and I'm going to lead the service. And later on, Alan is going to be speaking to us. Uh, so um, we're looking forward to that. And our theme today is the passage in Luke where Jesus tells the people that are listening to him not to worry. And in this current climate where we're so full of worry about so many things, I think Alan's got a real message of, of encouragement for us in that. Uh, and it's fascinating that Jesus was telling that to people 2,000 years ago who were obviously facing the same issues and challenges that, that, that we do today. So let's open our service with, uh, with a prayer. Father God, we thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing us to worship you. We invite your Holy Spirit into our, this service this morning. We pray that he would help us to worship you, to meet with you, the living God. Help us to hear your voice and to be able to worship you. Please speak to us and to our situation and help us to uh, worship you uh, this morning and bring you into our lives. Amen. So we're going to stand and uh, let's sing together uh, our first song, which is a song of praise. Uh, hear all creation, uh, lift its voice, and thank you, Ban, for leading us with this. Thank you. Please take a seat. Wonderful, isn't it, to start our service worshiping God like that. We're going to now to come to a, a, a time of confession where we can offer up to God the things that we're not so proud of that have gone on this week. Uh, you're familiar with the, the routine. I hope you'll be familiar with the words. Uh, they'll be on the screen. So let's say these together, and we're, we're all saying these together. Um, so let's, let's pray and... Just for a moment, remember those things that we do want to offer to God, of the things we're not so proud of this week. So let's say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned 
in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And I can say this for all of us, myself included. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image, to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing again. Um, again, a song of praise, because it's just great to be able to do that on a Sunday like this. So thank you, band. Our song is, He is Exalted. It's a short one. We'll sing it twice, but it's a, it's a wonderful uh, fanfare to God. Please be seated, and let's let's continue in praise as we pray uh, as we pray to God now. Lord God, we do thank you that you are indeed exalted. Although the world doesn't always see this, we thank you that you are forever and always part of this world and overseeing it and guiding it. We thank you for the part that you play in our lives. We thank you for Jesus and His service on earth and all that we learn from Him. We thank you for calling us and for making us your children. We thank you for this church and for all that we are in this place, in Valley Park, serving you here. And we worship you for being our God. Thank you for all that you are and all that you will be for this world. Amen. We're going to come now to our reading, and Becca's going to bring that to us. Thanks ever so much, Becca. by worrying can add a single hour to his life. 
Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you, not, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will not be destroyed, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Becca. And Alan's going to come and uh, speak to us now. And as you come up, Alan, can I pray for you? Is that all right? Father, Father, please bless Alan. Please speak with him. Speak through him. Uh, fill him with your Holy Spirit as he uh, leads us this morning. And help us to understand what you would have us do in our lives through the words he's prepared. Amen. So, help us, God, to hear your word with attention and understanding, and so to write its message on our hearts, and its power may be manifested in our lives, for the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As some of you uh, know, Jean is going through, as my wife is going through some significant health problems and is in hospital at the moment, and we're both naturally very worried. If we really believe that the good news of the gospel is there for each one of us, that God loves and cares for us, then why do we worry? I think it's one of the constant temptations we face. If you care about someone or something, then the temptation is to worry. If you're like me, you know that it doesn't change anything and often just makes things worse but we still worry. We can't help it. We worry about our family, our job, our money, our health, our children and grandchildren's future, and ultimately about our death. We worry about how world events are going to affect us. Global warming, the rise in terrorism, the world economy. And the news broadcasts don't really help, do they? They just encourage us to worry even more. So how do we rise to the challenge of today's passage where Jesus commands us not to worry and to build up our treasures in heaven? If we're not, caref if we're not careful, we'll just end up worrying about why we can't stop worrying. But how can we avoid it? How can we avoid worrying. Before we answer that question, it's worth highlighting what Jesus does not say. The reasons he does not give for not worrying. We're not told, do not worry, because if you believe in me, everything will turn out all right for you. Or do not worry, because a life of discipleship will instantly bring you a peaceful life where you won't be affected by the troubles of the world. We are not told, uh, do not worry because the world isn't really a frightening place and you're, not, and you're just making too much of it. What Jesus says is that worry doesn't accomplish anything. It's a waste of effort. Worry can't make our life any longer, but it can damage our health. It can stop us thinking about anything else. I don't know about you, but when I'm really worried about something, I find it difficult to sleep. I end up waking up in the middle of the night thinking about it, and then I end up tired the next day. So it can stop us doing anything else. 
It can affect the way we treat others as we take out our concerns on them. And it reduces our ability to trust in God. Modern medicine tells us that stress and anxiety caused by worry causes a variety of disorders that will shorten our life. So why, in spite of all the harm that worry does, do we still worry? And is there anything else we can do about it? When we worry, we're saying one of two things about God. We're either saying that God isn't powerful enough to help us, or that God is powerful, but doesn't care. Or maybe he even wants to hold us back. In either case, we're saying that we can't rely on God and must rely on ourselves. When we trust in ourselves above God, we're saying that we know better than God. We're not trusting our whole lives to him. Only faith can free us from the anxiety that worry causes. When we worry, we're concentrating on our own wants and needs rather than trusting that God, who loves us and promises to meet our every need, can deal with all the challenges and worries that life throws up. Jesus tells his disciples to make the kingdom of God their chief concern. This means that everything we do should be focused on the future coming of God's kingdom, representing God and his values here and now, and to seek his rule in our hearts and in the world. So many people spend their time worrying about the basics of life, but Jesus says, think about the kingdom first, and God will give you all you need from day to day. Christ's promise isn't that we'll get everything we want, but that he'll provide us with everything we need so that we can faithfully serve him. When we have our priorities right, we can trust that God will always care for us. We may not become rich, but we'll be given what we need. We're told that God the Father's greatest pleasure is going to be sharing his kingdom with us. So those whose true tre treasure is in heaven can be sure that whatever life throws at us, we can rely on God to be there for us. And so there's no need to worry. Worrying is about control. We only worry if we're trying to cope with and control a particular situation. If our abilities are only being used to accumulate money and possessions, so that we can have a more comfortable life, and all we are thinking about is ourselves, we'll always be worrying in case we lose it. This cuts us off from both God and the needy. The key to using our money and our abilities wisely is to be thinking about how they can be used for God's purposes, to help others rather than how we can use them just for ourselves then we don't have to worry because we know that God is in control. If we're using our money and abilities to help others, we're storing up lasting treasures in heaven. If worrying about money and possessions are pre preventing us from giving generously and using our abilities to love and serve others and to serve God, then the only way to stop worrying is to change our priorities and to bring our life into line with God's purposes. Seeking the kingdom of God means making Jesus the Lord and King of our life. As Lord and creator, he wants to help provide what we need, as well as show us how to use what he provides. He must control every area of our life, our plans, our relationships, not just on Sunday, but 24 seven, all day, every day. Is that true for you? Is God central to all you do? Or is the kingdom only one of the many things you're concerned about? Are there any areas of your life which you are holding back from God's control? Those things that you have to do, even though you know you shouldn't, those things 
that you don't talk about. Those things that you must have, no matter what. I don't know the specific things that you may be worrying about today, or that you'll end up worrying about in the future. But I know that, like me, you have things that you could worry about because all human uh, who all humans and the world is the kind of place where worrying is the natural thing to do. But Jesus says that things can be different if we're prepared to trust him. That he's willing and able to lift us above the natural thing to do and to introduce us to an unnatural way of living. One that enables us to trust, hope, persevere, suffer, and love without worrying through our faith in God's power and love, which opens the way to a confidence and truth that is greater and more powerful than all our worries. Amen. Thank you, Alan. We're going to sing again. Um, it's a song that will help us perhaps reflect on what we've just heard and what we've been thinking about. Um, it's, a, it's a song I, th I, th I think of comment around what we prioritise, that last little bit that Alan talked about. And it, it doesn't deny how we might feel, um, but I think, it, uh, uh, I think it looks forward to how God would have us uh, think and focus and prioritise him in our lives. So we're going to sing All I Once Held Dear. So if you're able, please stand and thank you, band, for leading us in this. I once held dear, filled my 
please take a seat. And Ian is going to come and lead us in our prayers of intercession. Thanks, Ian. Good morning, everyone, here in church and at home via Zoom. We'll use the refrain today, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we prepare to pray, take a few deep breaths. Allow your mind to slow down. God is here and he is longing to spend time with you. In the Psalms we hear, let us give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness and we will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Lord, help us to remember that your glory is in heaven. When we look to the world to satisfy and validate ourselves, and we worry about this world, help us to remember the words of Jesus, that each of us is more valuable to you than the birds in the trees and the lilies in the fields. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Romans, Paul reminds us, in certain ways we are weak, but the Spirit is here to help us. For example, when we don't know what to pray for, the Spirit prays for us in ways that cannot be put into words. Therefore, this morning, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit be with us in these prayers for the world. And with some space to think about the specifics, we just remember the terrible situations in this list of countries and other places known to you. In Libya, in the Ukraine, in Russia, in Iran, in Brazil, in Morocco, and any other places known to us where people are suffering both from man-made and natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, when we worry, help us turn to you. Give us strength to bring our concerns to you and open our hearts and minds to you in our worries. We live in a society with rising levels of unease, yet we know when we rest in you and hand over our worries to you, we will find peace. Lord, we ask for your peace in our lives. And in a moment of silence, we turn again to you and give to you this morning our fears and worries of today and this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, you won the victory and defeated death and the great enemy. We ask you to bring your life and love into our lives. We pray that we, as we heard in today's reading, that our day-to-day -day worries we know will still exist. But our faith in the victory you won when you rose from dead, death on that first Easter Sunday will keep us focused in our walk with you. We ask your Holy Spirit to be with us. We ask your Holy Spirit to calm us. 
We ask your Holy Spirit to begin the change in us, to melt our hard hearts, and we ask your Holy Spirit to help us see in all people and places you and turn us into the joyful nation for your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all leaders in our world, in our church, in our work, in our community. We pray for all those with influence over others. We ask your Holy Spirit to show them the love of Jesus and help them build a world we can all say, Jesus is Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick in mind, body and soul. We pray for all those known to us who need God's unfailing love. Those who are sick. Those who are troubled and those who mourn. Lord God, through your Holy Spirit, give these people known to us your love, the love of the Father and Mother who can never fail. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Heavenly Father, please accept our prayers, guided by your Holy Spirit, to be more like your Son, Jesus. Amen. And together, in whichever version, language you feel most comfortable, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 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 Whoever it is, this girl is on fire, so. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> and they really want to talk to you. Somehow, in an attitude of prayer, <laughs> let's just thank God for all that's been given to the work of the church here. Father, we do thank you for all the gifts that have been given to the church for uh, the work here. We thank you for those who've given and the work that went into earning that money. And we ask that you would use it to your glory here and to serve those who live in our, in our area. Uh, amen. Uh, as you probably know, Sarah's away this, this week and for the next couple of weeks. So if you've got any concerns about anything, contact the church office. Uh, or in fact, if you get the newsletter, you'll have probably seen it's got my contact details in there as well, because Fiona, the other church warden, is also away. So do get in touch. Don't, don't sit on anything that you're, that you're concerned about. This week, uh, it's really, it's just our usual cafe that's going on, on 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 Monday and Wednesday. There won't be any morning prayer on Monday. But do come along to the cafe if you've not been before. They're, they're, they're really good. Um, next Next Sunday... It's messy church in the afternoon, so if you uh, know families that are, uh, th that are going to benefit from that, do tell them about it. And our morning service at 10 o'clock will be communion, so it'll be lovely to share communion to together with you uh, if you're here for that. Um, we're going to finish our service. It's interesting, I must have left something out of planning this service, <laughs> because we're super early, aren't we? But uh, hey, that's fine. Stick around and talk with each other, because that's, that's part of being church as well, isn't it? Um, but we're going to sing a final song together, um, which uh, is Before the Throne of God. And this is a real statement, I think, of God's grace for us uh, and his power in our lives. And just let's use it to commit ourselves back to God again uh, and for 
our service for the week that, that's coming. So let's, let's use it as a prayer of commitment as we sing together. Please stand if you're able. We'll say the grace together in a moment, but as we come to the end of the service, just to remind you that at the back on the, the red chairs at the back, there's the opportunity to pray with one of our, our prayer team. If there's anything that's concerning you at the moment that you'd like prayer with, uh, something may have prompted that in, in, in the service today. So don't go, if there's something God is saying to you today, don't leave here without dealing with that and, and spending some time in prayer if it would help you with others. Um, do stay behind for tea and coffee and, and share with that. I'm conscious we finished nice and early, no need to rush off, but the, the junior church will still be uh, doing their thing for another few minutes, so, so let's not disturb them as we do that. But as we finish the service, let's say the grace together, which you'll, you'll find on the screen. And we can say this to each other um, as, a, as a blessing to each other as we go into the week. May, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.